We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back with Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor, Scott Cassandra. Earlier in the show, we were talking the fallout from the Supreme Court decision on Donald Trump's immunity plea. Uh, now, really, Scott, what I want to dig into is what's going to happen with special prosecutor Jack Smith. There's, it seems that based on this latest ruling, pretty much everything, every case, every charge that he's put forth against former President Donald Trump will have to be viewed through the lens of this new ruling. So how does that look to your legal mind? It's daunting prospect, just the mechanics of it, if you were on the Smith prosecution team. So what the Supreme Court has said is that uh, any statement, so Jack Smith would like to use Donald Trump's statements as evidence against him that he fomented the insurrection, for instance. That includes tweets, uh, individual statements to people, the speech he gave on the ellipse. Um, curiously enough, the failure to tweet, <laughs> that, that, but that's another, we'll, we'll, we'll side pocket that discussion, that his lack of somehow urging people to do it in, in, in a manner that Jack Smith found compelling to stop you know, committing violence at the Capitol. But in any case, each of the affirmative acts that he did, um, uh, uh, just a mention to somebody in line or the, or, the, or the speech or the tweet would have to be examined for whether or not it was a core constitutional function that the president was engaging in. Uh, and those things have absolute immunity. So, for instance, if he says to Mike Pence, uh, some conversation about the counting of electoral votes, well, Obviously, it's part of the president's core constitutional duty to attend to the transfer of power in a, a kind of, you know, head of the executive sort of way. Um, and then there are the lesser kind of statements of official acts that are not core constitutional, like, for instance, giving a public speech on the ellipse in Washington might be considered an official act that's not part of the core constitutional thing. And then there's the unofficial acts um, and they get no immunity, which we don't know, you know, what bucket those are in. But each individual tweet, Mark, has to be, gee, was this tweet a core constitution? No. Was it an official act? Well, if it communicated public policy to the people, maybe it is an official act. Or, or maybe it's purely personal. Like maybe if he insults Rosie O'Donnell's corpulence or something like that, that might be an, a, a purely uh, unofficial act. Well, but, I, don't, I don't believe that's technically a felony, Scott. <laughs> but uh, all these things have to be weighed against this standard. And the way that the standard lays out, Mark, it just seems unlikely mm. that many or any of them will then be able to fall into the, okay, we can then charge this criminally after reviewing them through the lens of Trump v. United States and Justice Roberts' majority opinion through it. So what, what will have to happen then is any instance in which Jack Smith's prosecutor, prosecutorial team, either in the uh, Florida case or the Washington, D.C. case, they'll have to essentially what this, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the opinion from the Supreme Court said that each thing has to be reexamined in the lower courts. So... so well, let, let, let's parse out, because you, you, you lumped in the Florida case and the D.C. case. That, the that's because why, I'm so effective, Scott. And the reason why I'd, I want to take care not to do that is because for the Florida case, that has to do with Trump uh, actions that Donald Trump took after he was president of the United States. And the D.C. case has to do with actions that Donald Trump took while he was president of the United States. And those things are a bit of a... You know, those are sort of different animals, generally speaking, uh, as we look at the Supreme Court's. Well, let's look at the Washington, D.C. case then specifically. Right. You have uh, each, as you say, tweet, message, statement, sentence, conversation. That will have to be viewed by the lower courts on whether, and it will be the lower courts that determine whether each statement was uh, fell into one of the three categories as in uh, a core piece of the president and they're actions. going to fight about each individual one just to give people a sense mark of the calendar win here for donald trump mm. so so mr uh mr smith will have to now produce an exhaustive list of everything he might wish to introduce every statement he might wish to introduce as evidence 
against Donald Trump. And then for each of those statements, there will be briefing schedules. There will be oral argument in the lower courts, which is where the Supreme Court sent the case down, like you just mentioned, and then fighting over each of those statements. And then, Mark, what happens after the judgment of Judge Chuck Can at the district court level? If it goes against Trump, what do you think? It's an appeal. It's an appeal. And guess what? Since it's a brand new area of the law, who the hell knows what the uh, appellate court might do and then how the Supreme Court might view the appellate court's treatment. Uh, so the calendar win here is epic for Donald Trump, whether or not he ultimately still has to stand trial for something or not in this case. And I think that the winds are, are blowing in towards the not uh, uh, side of things. But even if he does, it's, going to, it's not going to be in 2024, I'll tell you that. So I'm reminded of uh, a speech by uh, JFK. He said, we, it's something along the lines, we do these things not because they're easy, but because they're difficult. Now, is that going to be the attitude in <laughs> the prosecutor, prosecutorial oh. office of Jack Smith at the moment? And thinking, can, speaking from his perspective, can he realistically get to a verdict within any time scale that it makes sense for this to continue? And I think that's the question, isn't it? Yeah, the answer seems to be no. Uh, if we presume, and I do presume, that the entire impetus uh, of these prosecutions was to frustrate Donald Trump's electoral ambitions rather than any notion of justice or applying facts to laws, uh, then it's a, it's a defeat in, in its uh, you know, eventual goal. Uh, matter of fact, you could say that given the you know, blowback for the political prosecution, you might call it a total failure. I mean, uh, Donald Trump has been given a massive amount of uh, free press. You know, that's what he feeds off of um, because of these prosecutions that he otherwise wouldn't have. We'll see what the imposition of sentences in the New York case, which, by the way, may be postponed because of this Supreme Court decision. There's an argument to be had that uh, some of the evidence that was introduced against Donald Trump in his New York state uh, trial was improperly introduced in light of this Supreme Court decision. Now, I don't know how, how firm that, uh, that position is, but... Let, let's dig into this. I, I understand that it's, it is a purely speculative uh, argument, but if I were trying to get into the mind of Donald Trump's lawyers, who are obviously seeking essentially a, a full employment act here, uh, courtesy of uh, Donald Trump facing off against uh, the, the Department of Justice. Uh, wouldn't they just choose to challenge everything through this new lens of the ruling anyway, because that would delay pretty much everything to do with the case, wouldn't it? Yes, I, and I expect that they will. Well, that, that's got to be an interesting position for Alvin Bragg now, although he has already obviously made his, made, made his prosecutorial bones on this. Yeah, but he'll, just file a, he'll just file a response that says that there's no impetus, that, you know, there's no change required because this has to do with, you know, uh, the, because the immunity for the filling out the form uh, and lying on it, which is what Trump was convicted of, uh, that was an unofficial act um, to, to perjure himself on the disclosure form. So uh, I don't know that it's, you know, it's more for, uh, for the judge. You know, how does the judge handle it? And then once again, no matter what the judge says, what are we going to have? We're going to have appeals. So whether the appellate courts treat, uh, treat that uh, with more delays or not, as the world turns, you know, we're, we're just going to have to see. Scott Cassenza, thanks ever so much. Thank you, Mark. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.